Lesson 5.4a, Modeling and Dividing Decimals by Whole Numbers. We can model 54 hundredths divided by 2. We can use decimal grids to find a quotient. This grid is 10 by 10. It has 100 squares. So we shade the grid to model 54 hundredths. We shade 54 of the squares. And we separate the model into two equal groups. There are 27 hundredths in each group. 54 hundredths divided by 2 is equal to 27 hundredths. Here we have 8 tenths divided by 2. If our decimal division problem involves tenths, we can use a grid model of tenths. We divide 8 tenths into two equal groups. That's the number of groups. We have 4 tenths in each group. It's equal to 4 tenths. Here we have 1 and 6 tenths divided by 2. We're going to use two grids. For one whole, we shade the entire first grid. Then, for the 6 tenths, we shade 6 columns of the second grid. And there are 16 columns shaded now. So remember, columns come down, rows go across. So we've got 16 columns shaded there are 16 of those. We want to divide them equally by 2. There's going to be 8 columns in each of the two equal parts. It's going to be 8 tenths. And the number of grids we use to model decimal division depends on the dividend. We use the next greater whole number. This is not rounding. It doesn't matter if the 4 tells the 3 to stay the same. We just use the next greater whole number. So if we have 3 and 44 hundredths, we're going to use 4 grids so we can put the 44 hundredths on the last grid. If we have 6 and 93 hundredths, we're going to use 7 grids so we can put the 93 hundredths on the last grid. So we just use the next greater whole number. Now, we learned this in 5th grade math 5.5, and there'll be a link in this description to that video if you're really rusty about this and you need to know how to make the models for decimal division. So this is how we divide decimals by whole numbers. Dividing decimals is similar to dividing whole numbers. When we divide a decimal by a whole number, we place the decimal point in the quotient directly above the decimal point in the dividend. We also learned this in fifth grade math, and there'll be a link. So when the dividend is a whole number, the decimal point just goes straight up. We have 4 and 5 tenths divided by 5. We do this just like we're doing regular long division. 5 can't fit into 4, so we put a 0 there. 5 fits into 45 9 times because 9 times 5 is 45. We subtract the 45 and get a 0. Our answer is 9 tenths. Here we have 12 and 9 tenths divided by 3. 3 can't fit into the 1, so we don't put the answer here. And 3 can fit into 12 4 times, so we write a 4 above the 2. 3 times 4 is 12. We subtract it, get a 0. It's the 9's turn to come down. 3 fits into 9 3 times. And 3 times 3 is 9. We get a 0 remainder. That decimal point just goes straight up. The quotient is 4 and 3 tenths. Very easy. Just when you're dividing and the divisor is a whole number, just bring that decimal point straight up. Same thing goes with word problems that involve money. A box of donuts costs $4.74. There's six donuts in the box. What's the price per donut? We think we can divide the cost of the box by six. Then we'll know how much each donut costs. We have $4.74. We're dividing it by six. That's a whole number. We ask ourselves, how many times can 6 fit into 4? It can't, so we're going to put a 0 there. We're going to remember our dollar sign. The next thing we do is say, okay, it didn't fit into the 4. We've got our decimal point going straight up. 6 fits into 47, 7 times, because 6 times 7 is 42. We subtract and get a 5. It's the 4's turn to come down. And now we ask ourselves, how many times 6 fits into 54? Well, 6 fits into 54 9 times because 6 times 9 is 54. We put a 9 up here. 
we do the 6 times 9 is 54 and then subtract it and get a zero remainder, we know that each donut is 79 cents. The decimal point goes straight up into the quotient. Remember to write the dollar sign in the quotient because this is money. This problem says Tala paid $185.04 for a video streaming service for one year. How much did it cost her per month? We think our answer needs to be in months. We need to find per month. And there's 12 months in one year, so we can divide $185.04 by 12. That'll tell us the cost of one month. We ask ourselves, can 12 fit into one? Nope. Can 12 fit into 18? Yes. How many times? One time. I'm going to make sure we put our dollar sign. We do 12 times 1, which is 12. Subtract and get a 6. It's the 5's turn to come down. Well, 12 times 5 is 60, so we can put a 5 here. And we know 12 times 5 is 60, so we're going to subtract that. 65 minus 60 is 5. Now it's this zero's turn to come down. How many times can 12 fit into 50? Well, 12 times 4 is 48. We can put a 4 here above the zero we drop down. We can subtract that 48. We get a 2. It's this 4's turn to come down. 12 fits into 24 two times. We do the multiplication and subtract that amount. We get a zero remainder. We know it costs her $15.42 per month. Just remember when you're dealing with money and your answer is a money amount, we have to have the dollar sign up there. And this was a whole number. We just brought the decimal point straight up and it told us $15.42. So now we've finished this lesson, we're going to move on to 5.4b, where we're going to be dividing a decimal by a decimal. We just did a whole number. Now we're going to be dividing by a decimal. I hope you'll join me. Remember that those videos from last year are not that long, and it'll really catch you up so you know what's going on. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time. Hit that like button. Bye.